This is the first video in the Excel Unit A, which is entitled Getting Started with Excel 2007. Our objectives for this unit on there is going to be to first of all to understand spreadsheet software. Then we're going to take a tour of the Excel 2007 window and understand its different parts. Then after that we're going to be understanding formulas. Then you should be able to enter labels and values and to use the auto sum. Also, to, we're going to be editing cell entries, entering and editing a simple formula, switching between the different worksheet views, and then finally choosing print options. If you turn to page Excel 2 in your textbook on there, and it's the one with the little, it's the green tab pages that's on there, uh, we take a look at understanding spreadsheet software. First of all, we have to understand that Microsoft Excel is the electronic spreadsheet program within the Microsoft Office suite. And really, an electronic spreadsheet is an application that you use to perform numeric calculations and to analyze and present numeric data. One advantage of using the spreadsheet programs over pencil and paper is that, you, that your calculations are updated automatically so that when you change your entries or change your values on there, you don't have to go back and recalculate everything. It does that for you. Now, when you open up a file, in Excel. These files are, are going to be called workbooks on there. And of course, what is inside books? Different sheets. So the individual spreadsheet when you open up Microsoft Excel is going to be called a worksheet. And there are different sheets that go along within each file. And once again, the file is going to be called a workbook. So just kind of tie that to real life on there and think of, well, if I open a book, what's inside of it? Different sheets or different pages. Uh, on there. So the individual spreadsheet that you're working on is called a worksheet and all of the sheets combined make up the file which is called a workbook. So why is it important or you know why is it really good to be using Microsoft Excel? Well first of all uh, you can actually enter data quickly and accurately because with Excel you can enter information faster and more accurately than you can with paper and pencil you very quickly go in there it will actually double check things for you to make sure that uh, there are values there uh, and that they're the correct values such as if you're trying to multiply by zero it lets you know you can't do that uh, on there one of the biggest benefits to it is that you can actually recalculate data very easily because whenever you fix typing errors or you update the data that in Excel it's going to automatically recalculate that for you so instead of having to go through there and break out your calculator again and try to go through and make sure that you get the calculation done correctly another time this makes sure it recalculates it for you when you make those changes if you have your formula set up properly also it allows you to perform what if analysis and this actually gives you the ability to change data and to quickly view the recalculated results that it gives you and that also gives you the power to make you more informed uh, for business decisions. Let's say for an example you're considering raising the hourly rate for an entry-level uh, tour guide uh, that we're going to be working on here from $12.50 an hour to $15 an hour. And you can enter that data, that new value, into the worksheet and immediately see what happens on there. And that's what we call a what-if analysis. You know, if I change this, what's going to happen? Uh, on there or what if I do this what if I do that it's going to give us that information almost immediately as soon as we input in the information if we have the spreadsheet set up properly to begin with it also allows us to change the appearance of information because Excel provides us powerful features for making information visually appealing and easy to understand uh, you can format the text and numbers and different fonts colors and styles just to make it stand out and then also you can create charts because Excel makes it easy to create charts based on the worksheet information because charts as well as formulas and everything else are updated automatically whenever you change the data and that makes things so much easier. And then it also allows you to share information because it's easy for everyone uh, that is using Excel uh, on there if you have a company intranet or the internet or any kind of network storage device you can complete your file and then someone else can access that file and everything or you can email the file it makes it very easy to share that information 
and also very importantly you can build on your previous work because uh, instead of creating a new worksheet for every single project you can modify existing worksheets and then you can do a save as uh, on there as well so this gives you a lot of things so once you set up a spreadsheet once generally you don't have to do it time and time again now also if uh, you want to Excel does have templates as well and that allows you to create new worksheets very quickly and that are already set up for you. And this just shows you an example here of a spreadsheet or a worksheet with a chart that's on it. And of course you notice we even have some images and everything else uh, that's on there as well. Because you can do many different things like you know in Excel, such as perform calculations. And that's either adding formulas and functions to the worksheet. Uh, on there that will do these calculations for you. So you don't even have to use a calculator whatsoever. Excel will do that work for you. And of course we've already mentioned about creating charts and that's where you can represent values graphically. You can even create generate reports and you can do that by creating workbooks that combine information from multiple worksheets on there. So you can tie these worksheets together. Also allows you to organize your data because when you sort your data uh, either in ascending, like A to Z order, or descending, uh, Z to A order, you know, for an example, you can do that, and that allows you to organize your data very quickly. You can also analyze your data, because you can create data summaries and short lists uh, using auto filters, and that might help you, you know, keep your top 10 customers uh, in your radar, and also allows you to create what if data scenarios. So next, let's take a look at touring the two th Excel 2007 window. And we're going to go ahead and close out of this PowerPoint here. And let's take a look at our Excel window. And of course, if you're looking on page 4 at this time period, it's going to ask you to open up this file, and that is the EXA1. And you'll find that on the course sites underneath the content area for Excel A. Now, to start Excel, uh, Microsoft Windows, of course, most of all, must be running and you open it very similar to any other office program such as Word on there. Now you may have a shortcut that's on your desktop or you may have to go in and use the start button uh, on there. If you have some uh, difficulties in trying to locate this program uh, just let me know and I'll be glad to come around and help you out there. Now when taking a look around this window the very first thing that we need to start uh, doing is, is that first of all let's save our file and notice that we have our office button that's up here on the left hand side and this looks very similar to uh, Word. You know, it has our new, open, save, save as, print, prepare, prepare uh, send, publish. It has most of those same options. And to save as, uh, or you know, to save this document as something else, we need to click on our save as. And I'm going to go ahead and put this into my documents, but we need to save this file as tour guide payroll calculator and then I'm going to go ahead and save this and you'll notice that very similar taking a look some of the same features are there uh, of course we've already mentioned our office button the quick access toolbar up here also has our title bar which gives the name of our file as well as the name of the program we have our minimize maximize and restore down and our close buttons and it, you'll also notice as well that we have all the different tabs and ribbons. So all that is very easy uh, on there. And it's exactly what you used in Word. It's just that the different ribbons uh, are there that's going to allow you to do things that are in Excel. Now if we take a look around, uh, so most of this up at the top is very similar. If we take a look here where it says A1, and that's what we have a name box. And the name box is going to display the name of the active cell address. And the active cell address is really the individual cell, and it's a cross section of the column and the row. So in this case, I know I'm in column A and in row one. If I move my insertion point, say over here, I would see that it is in column I and row 12. And you'll notice that here as well, that we have our column headings right here which are alphabetical it's A to Z and then of course once you get through Z it goes along with AA, AB and so forth and then also we have uh, on our row headings is numeric so it goes one all the way down 
uh, on there. Now, there's not an infinite number of uh, rows that you can have. There is a set limit that's on there. So next thing that we're going to take a look at here is directly to the right of our name box and that is what we call the formula bar. And the formula bar is going to contain either our data such as in this case Quest Specialty Travel, you'll notice the words are up here as well. It's going to have numbers on here such as our values such as 40 or 35 and then also this is where we can input in our formulas and everything on there such as if we take a look at the overtime pay here or the OT pay we see that there's a formula there and that's what that is. This is where we can actually uh, enter and edit our data in our worksheet. Because the worksheet window contains a grid of columns and rows, uh, we remember that the columns are labeled alph alphabetically and the rows are labeled numerically. The worksheet window can actually contain a total of 1,048,576 rows and 16,300 84 columns. So you can hold a lot of information in these spreadsheets. Now we're not going to go up to that far on there, but you can see that there's a lot of information that you can use. And as we said before, the intersection of a row and the column is called a cell on there. And of course the cell address is a named up here at the name box. So A1 is the intersection of A and 1. Now our cell pointer is the dark rectangle that outlines the cell in which you are working with. So notice here I'm in cell A1 and that there is a thick border around the cell. And notice that whenever I click on these different cells, that cell pointer is moving and it's wherever I point and click to at. And of course, when we call it an active cell, that's the cell we're currently working with. So like here, you notice that um, I have my formula up here and that's where this 350 is coming from that is there or if I point here we see that the 40 is there so if I need to make some changes I first of all have to click on that to make it the active cell then I can make my changes and of course down here we see that this is our work area here and this is where our rows and columns are at as well as all our cells if we look down a little bit we have these you see where it says sheet 1 sheet 2 and sheet 3 those are what we call our sheet tabs uh, on there. And the sheet tabs are below the worksheet grid and it lets you switch from sheet to sheet in a workbook. And by default the workbook contains three worksheets but you can use just one or you can have as many as 255 in a workbook. And of course the insert worksheet button is to the right of sheet three and that's this button right here. And you'll notice that uh, there it says insert worksheet or you can hit the shift and F11 keys. Now as well we notice that we do have some scroll bars and we do have our vertical scroll bar here and we have our horizontal scroll bar and that allows us to move around at our work area. Now very similar to Word as well we do have a status bar area down here at the bottom and it provides a brief description uh, of the active commands or the task and process also shows us a mode indicator uh, on here as well that lets us know what's going on and what's happening and that's in the bottom left corner of the status bar. So now uh, if we take a look at step 5 on uh, page Excel 4 it tells us that we want to click on cell A4 and notice that we have the name up here and it says A4 becomes the active cell and to activate a different cell you can click on the cell or press the arrow key so I can use my arrow keys and I can move around as well. If I click on B5 down here, I can now select a range. And of course, a range is a grouping of cells. And ranges are typically named by the first upper left hand cell followed by the lower right hand cell. So in this case, what we're going to do is, is that we're going to click on uh, here on cell B5 and we're going to drag this down to B14. And this is what we have is our range. And this is going to be called range B5, B14. Now I did say it was the upper left and the lower right is going to be the name of it. So the upper left in this case is going to be the B5. 
the lower right, well, since this is an individual column, is still going to be in the B column, but this is going to be B14. Now, take a look down here as well. There's some really good information that you can actually figure out just by highlighting some information or some data there. And we can tell that right now that the average of these highlighted numbers is 37.8. We know that there are 10 items that we've highlighted, and the sum of them, or the total of them, is 378. So that gives you a brief overview of the Excel window. Now we will be using more and more and we'll learn about uh, these different buttons that's up here, but we'll do those in later videos. So now go ahead and turn your textbooks to page Excel 6 and you're ready for video 2.